Hi, and welcome back to Lizzie's Lab. In some previous episodes, we were looking at homemade nitrogen lasers, and a couple of people had emailed me asking me about the doorknob capacitors that I've been using in my designs. Now, these can be quite expensive and quite difficult to get hold of, and they were curious to see if wire-ended high-voltage capacitors like this one, which can be had very, very cheaply, um, are suitable for use in the design. So let's go and find out. So it's been a while since my last nitrogen laser video. I'd run out of nitrogen um, and shipping has been incredibly slow for reasons that are probably quite obvious to everyone. Uh, when the nitrogen turned up and I screwed my old regulator to it, the regulator promptly disassembled in my hands, um, almost lost a finger, so that was kind of entertaining. So I've splashed out the money on a, a, a proper, a, a real decent regulator. This, this is an excellent uh, piece of kit, it was quite expensive, you know, about 60 quid. Um, but it's got a nice gauge on it that tells me how much gas is remaining in the bottle, which I didn't have before. It doesn't leak like the old one. Um, the old one, if you left the regulator attached to the bottle for a couple of weeks, it would actually empty it. So there was obviously a small leak in there somewhere as well. Um, it's worth saying, you know, if you're going to be uh, doing anything with high pressure gases, spend the money, uh, get some decent kit. Um, it'll do you well in the long run. This is the miniature homemade nitrogen laser that I showed in a previous episode. It's very, very tiny. The channel length is only six centimeters long, but it's more than capable of driving a small homemade dye laser. A couple of people had asked about the capacitors for these. So we've got a peaking capacitor, which is homemade. Uh, it's made out of acetate sheet with uh, tin foil on top. Uh, but the other one is a doorknob capacitor, and these are quite difficult to get hold of um, at a reasonable price. I mean, they show up on eBay every now and again, but sometimes, you know, sellers are asking, you know, 70 dollars $80, $100 each for these things. So they're kind of difficult to come by. Mm -hmm. A couple of people had asked if you could replace this with uh, wire-ended capacitors uh, like this. Um, this is a, a high voltage, uh, I think it's a like 10,000 picofarads. Um, 30 kilovolt capacitor. I've got another one here that says it's 40,000 volts at 1,000 picofarads. And then of course I've got other, other doorknob capacitors as well. So, you know, I've got this TDK, um, I've got a, a Russian doorknob capacitor and some other bits and pieces. So it'd be kind of, be kind of cool to see if you could actually drive, uh, drive the laser off of a wire-ended um, capacitor. I mean, these things are dirt cheap. They can be had for, you know, a couple of, couple of bucks um, a pop. You know, you can, sometimes you can buy a whole bag load for like five, five quid, you know. So uh, we'll have a look at that. So before we get into it and, and try wire-ended capacitors in the design, I thought we'd just take a look again at the two uh, nitrogen laser schematics. Uh, the first one is the LC inversion circuit, uh, commonly used um, for small nitrogen lasers. It's the one where you make the, the two capacitors um, by yourself either side of the channel. And the whole idea of this is that C1 and C2 uh, both charge up uh, via this inductor to whatever voltage you apply to it. You know, let's say 17,500 volts or so. Uh, and the idea is that when the spark gap fires, it essentially shorts out this capacitor. And if we were to measure the voltage here, if we could, we'd expect that we'd, you know, we'd start off with like 17,000 volts and the idea is to get the voltage to drop as sharply as possible uh, on this side uh, to, to give us an abrupt uh, potential difference across the channel which will uh, uh, pump, the, pump the nitrogen molecules. Uh, I suppose if we were to try and replace these capacitors with wire-ended capacitors, we're gonna run into serious problems from the get-go. Um, generally, all capacitors have some measure of inductance um, and I, I suppose we would end up with a situation where this this side of the of the um, this capacitor essentially discharged so slowly uh, that we would never create the abrupt change that we need uh, across the channel. That's not to say it's not possible. Um, I've honestly never tried it, but my suspicion is just just sort of generally the layout of the whole thing. My suspicion is that this would be very difficult to uh, to do with wire-ended caps because of our parasitic inductance. If we take a look at the um, the charge transfer circuit, this is a little bit different. So we've got, we've got a capacitor, I better call it CD there. We've got a dumping capacitor over one side. And the idea is, is that we charge our dumping capacitor up first. And then when the spark gap fires, we abruptly um, try and charge our peaking capacitor. And the idea is, is if we make the peaking capacitor small enough, um, we can get like a massive or very, very steep rise time. Um, you know, sort of transferring charge from one side of the circuit to the other. So in our little uh, voltage time diagram here, we'd expect a sudden um, abrupt uh, change on the peaking capacitor, which would basically set up the channel for lasing. So lasing would occur, you know, maybe a nanosecond or so uh, later. 
but it seems to me um, and a couple of people have pointed this out uh, YouTube user JK uh, emailed me and said that he'd had some success with charge transfer circuits using laden jars and long lengths of wire on this side of the circuit essentially and if we think about it, it kind of makes sense if we make this dumping capacitor large enough really really huge in comparison with our peaking capacitor then even if you know this side is sort of relatively slow in terms of parasitic inductance we should be able to get a fast enough rise time um, or, or we should be able to charge up the peaking capacitor fast enough um, that that we can get lasing to effectively take place in the channel. Uh, a couple of couple of issues with this sort of thing, I suppose. If we take a look at um, this, this is a doorknob capacitor. I mean, it's a very very low inductance design. We only have to look at it. I suppose internally, you're looking at a big slab of uh, barium titanate. Is it TiO3? Can't remember. So we've got we've got a big slab of barium titanate, and it'll be metallized on each side of our capacitor there and then our lugs will be soldered onto that um, so we have a design where you know we've got incredibly incredibly low inductance if we take a look at a wire ended capacitor uh, we've got a slightly different arrangement here um, where we still have our um, slab of barium titanate um, we've got our silver coating or metallized coating on either side but then we've got wires that come off and obviously um, if we're to measure the inductance here um, it'd be a lot more significant than this. Yeah. Um, if we took a look at other capacitors as well, I think I've got one lying around. Let's root one out. I mean, obviously we couldn't use this um, in these designs. This is a polypropylene capacitor and essentially um, the electrodes are wound in a spiral. Um, so we've, we've got an immediate inductance issue right there. But there shouldn't be any reason why we couldn't use um, wire-ended capacitors in this application. Um, yeah. I've set one up here to, that we're going to try in our in our jig. I've just bent the leads over and soldered on, um, you know, something that I can uh, connect it to my nitrogen laser with. Um, I suppose the main problem here is the gap here is I don't know, 15 millimeters, something like that. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's about 14 millimeters. So our flash over voltage is potentially about 14,000 volts, and and it will flash over between the between the leads of the cap. I suppose. Um, if this works half decently, you could maybe like set this thing in epoxy or whatever, but we've still got the, the inductances and uh, while, while I haven't got equipment that's capable of measuring inductances this low, I mean we can see that it's a, it's a half turn on each side, um, so I would imagine there's quite a significant inductance there. Um, we'll take the nitrogen laser apart and uh, stick this in the place of the doorknob cap and see how it performs. This one's going to bolt through the bottom. So that's our original doorknob cap. This is, um, I think, about 600 picofarads. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, let's try and replace it with this. So this is a 1,000 picofarad um, wire-ended capacitor I picked up off eBay. Got a whole bag of these for like next to nothing, you know. Uh, where is it? It's like a whole bag of these things. I also bought um, some of these as well. These are also, they're allegedly, you know, they're all 40,000 volt rating, but in air, you're not going to get 40,000 volt standoff on these like you would with doorknob capacitors. Uh, but I bought some smaller ones in case this doesn't work too well. Um, and we can maybe parallel these up and see if we can uh, make a capacitor that way. Well, this will be a bit of a fiddle, a faff to get it in, I suppose. That might be workable. That's one side on. Now, as I said, the, the standoff voltage for this thing is going to be very, very poor. Um, so we can expect some arcs and sparks when uh, we try and fire this up, but it's just a, it's just an experiment, you know. And if it if it really is too difficult for some of you guys to get hold of doorknob capacitors and this thing works all right, um, it's a 
it's a viable alternative perhaps. All right, I think what about, it's a bit slack still. Try and get my fingernail in it, tighten up. It's not very keen on going in there. I'll just spring it up a bit. All right, that's close enough. So there's there's our wire-ended capacitor. It looks a little bit, um, a bit dodgy, but we'll give it a bell. So we've got the miniature nitrogen laser set up here with our little wire-ended 1000 picofarad dumping capacitor. Um, I've got the gas pressure set at around about two bars, which is the normal uh, running pressure for this spark gap. So we'll fire this thing up and see what happens. So we've got a lot of flash over, although we did get um, a little flash of orange there. So let's turn the pressure down. Um, if you turn the pressure down in the spark gap, consequently the, the applied voltage to the channel will drop. So we'll drop it to about like 1.6 bars. So that's lasing really quite well. I would say it's not as bright and as stable as uh, using the doorknob, but then I've dropped the pressure as well. So let's see how high we can get our spark gap pressure. Let's go to 1.65. So we've got a situation where it's lasing really, really well, but the, the capacitor's flashing over, which is kind of entertaining, but. Awesome. So I've just zoomed in on the laser here so we can see what's happening. Um, it's obviously flashing over across the two legs of the capacitor here. So let's fire it up and have a look. And now it's behaving. Let's crank it up to 1.7 bars. So you can still the you can see that the laser channel is still firing um, between between this thing breaking down. But Now it's not firing, awesome. And if we just ease off the gas pressure just a little bit. So here's a close up view of the laser channel. I've backed off the gas pressure down to like 1.6 bars. It's a pretty reasonable discharge in there. We'll see if we can get a shot of the, the dye laser beam through some smoke. We'll see if it's good enough to do that. Pretty reasonable. So I'll just take a, a quick look at the nitrogen laser beam itself on a, on a fluorescent target here. Um, bearing in mind we're still using our uh, wire-ended capacitor with a reduced voltage and a reduced spark gap pressure. still pretty reasonable the repetition rates really quite high it's like I say the only the only issue that we really have is the flash over between the wire ends um, everything else seems to run just fine I would hazard it would go so far as to say that if you were to um, you know assemble this into something sensible you know bend these over and um, sink the whole thing in epoxy I suspect we might be able to get the voltage rating that it claims on the on the package here it says it's 40,000 volts so that would presumably be the 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 internal insulation resistance for the for the dielectric and the epoxy um, but yeah it seems to work just fine i mean obviously if you can get door knob capacitors get them uh, because they're awesome they're, they're a really low inductance design they're very very robust they'll last you forever uh, if you take a look at any other um, real nitrogen laser design um, here's here's one i stripped down some time ago that was potted uh, they use doorknob capacitors throughout um, it has to be said you know performance is excellent for these things uh, and you've also got mechanical stability. I mean, you can, as they've done in here, you can bolt uh, sections together with these things. That said, if you can't get hold of doorknob capacitors, it would seem really quite apparent. You know, we've just seen it here and now uh, that wire-ended caps will do a reasonable job. It's just a case of insulating these things correctly. 
Thanks for watching this episode of Leslie's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.